In an earlier video, we saw that there may be blind spots for blood-based biological age calculators. For example, the cardiovascular fitness metrics, resting heart rate, RHR, and heart rate variability, HRV, are not included. So with that in mind, what's optimal for resting heart rate and heart rate variability, and how's my four-year progress? So first, how does the resting heart rate change during aging? So this is data for WHOOP. This is the fitness tracker that I wear. I'm not currently sponsored by them, but that's what I've been using since uh, August of 2018. And we can see that the resting heart rate for both women in red and men in blue increases during aging, at least from the 20 to 50 year age range. So what about at older ages? So this is data for Fitbit users and up to 50 years, we can see the same trend that resting heart rate increases for both men and women. But then after around 50 years, we can then see that the resting heart rate declines up to the 85 year age range. So with that in mind, note that relatively low resting heart rates are found in both young and in the aged. So is a relatively low resting heart rate indicative of youth or aging? So the heart rate variability, HRV, again, provides more context. So what is the heart rate variability, HRV? So the simple definition is that it's the variability for the time in between heartbeats. So with a heart rate of 60 beats per minute, the assumption is that it beats exactly once every second, but that's not necessarily true. So the variability for the time in between beats is the HRV. So how does heart rate variability change during aging? So this is data from a study of uh, more than 8.2 million subjects, and we're looking at the RMSSD, which is the version of heart rate variability that WHOOP measures, over the 20 to 60 year age range. And we can see that heart rate variability clearly declines during, during aging, at least for this uh, age range, from values approaching 80 in youth in 20 year olds to values less than 40 in 60 year olds. Now note that that data is early in the morning at six in the morning. So if the heart rate variability is recorded later at night at six at night, you can see that it's lower as indicated by the dashed red and blue lines. So to, to address the question, is a relatively low resting heart rate indicative of youth or aging? Let's bring back our plot for resting heart rate as shown there. So note that in youth, and more specifically 20 year olds, that's characterized by a relatively low resting heart rate and a high heart rate variability. In contrast, in older ages, uh, in this case, 60 years old, which, is, uh, which overlaps for both plots, we can see that 60 year olds would have a relatively higher uh, resting heart rate and a lower heart rate variability. Now, note that I've tracked resting heart rate and heart rate variability since August of 2018, so I have uh, 1,360 days of data. So have I been able to resist these age-related changes for both CV metrics? So starting with data for the resting heart rate, and again, this is from August of 2018 through April, the end of April 2022, so the end of Q1 2022. So that data is here, and I've got it broken down by year, and each dot corresponds to a single day for the resting heart rate uh, from over that time span. So each dot corresponds to a single day of data. So in 2018, when I first started tracking these metrics, my average uh, daily rest, resting heart rate was around 51 beats per minute. Now note that at no point uh, was I sedentary. I've, it, my whole life I've been active. It's uh, very small periods of my life have I ever been uh, sedentary. So this value, 50.9, uh, uh, I was physically active. So what happened in 2019? So in 2019, my average resting heart rate for the full year was 48.9. And we can compare if these two groups of data are statistically different by using a two sample t-test. And when I did that, we can see that 2019's data is significantly lower than 2018. So I was able to reduce my resting heart rate year over year, 2019 versus 2018. Similarly, in 2020, resting heart rate continued to decline, 48.1. And using the two sample t-test, we can see that 2020 data was significantly lower than 2018. And also 2020 resting heart rate data was lower than 2019. All right, in 2021, uh, further reduction for the resting heart rate down to 47.4 beats per minute. And that value was significantly lower than 2018 using the two sample t-test and also lower than 2020 data, again, using a two sample t-test. So what about in 2022, at least through the end of April, Q1 2022? So, so far this year, my average resting heart rate is 45.7 beats per minute, which is significantly lower than from where I started uh, in 2018, and also significantly lower than 2021. So from this, we can see that I've consistently reduced my resting heart rate over that almost 1400 day span. All right, so in terms of aging, is this resting heart rate reduction going in the right or wrong direction? So for that, we go back to our plot as shown there. And first note that uh, from over the 20 to 50 year age range, the resting heart rate increases uh, during aging. 
So thus far, I've been able to resist that age-related increase for resting heart rate. One should expect that my resting heart rate would have increased at least up to 50 years since my chronological age is currently 49. I'll be 50 next year. All right, now also note that a relatively low resting heart rate uh, could be found in youth. There's a, there's a typo there. Shouldn't be, the of shouldn't be there. Sorry about that. Could be found in youth, but also in advanced age, as shown there. So for more context, whether this is uh, good or bad, if, whether it's indicative of youth or age, uh, let's have a look at heart rate variability since 2018. And that's what's shown here. Again, each dot corresponds to a single day of data, and that's almost 1,400 days of data since August of 2018. So when I first started tracking these metrics, my average daily heart rate variability was 40, around 47.3, or it was 47.3 milliseconds, so around 47. And then I was able to increase that in 2019, and using a two-sample t-test, these two groups of data were significantly different, so a significantly higher heart rate variability in 2019 versus 2018. Similarly, in 2020, it further increased to 57.8. Was that significantly different compared to 2018? It was, as shown there. But was 2020 data a significant increase over 2019? And as shown by the t-test, it's close to significance, but it's not statistically significant. A p-value less than 0.05 would be significant. In this case, it's a little bit outside that. So 2019 versus 2020, similar uh, heart rate variability data. It's not a significant increase, that small bump from 56 to around 58. All right, and then 20, in 2021, I had a regression for heart rate variability. The average for the year was around 52 milliseconds, more, more specifically 51.9. And the 51.9, fortunately, is higher than when I started in 2018, but uh, significantly lower than 2020 data. So 2021 was a bad year for heart rate variability. Now, I don't like for any part of my approach to get worse, especially heart rate variability or resting heart rate. So in 2022, an obvious goal would be to restore or improve uh, heart rate variability uh, and resting heart rate and all the other metrics uh, to re reverse this 2021 decline. So what about 2022 data? So thus far in this year, over the first four months, my heart rate variability is averages 54.3 milliseconds, and that is significantly higher than where I started in 2018. And it's also significantly higher when compared with 2021 data. So off to a good start in reversing that uh, regression in 2021 for heart rate variability. So uh, the net effect, though, is that since 2018, I've been able to increase my heart rate variability over this uh, almost four year span. So how do these data compare with age related changes for heart rate variability? So let's bring back this plot. So the expected median heart rate, heart rate variability based on my chronological age, CA, is about 35 milliseconds. So when considering that my heart rate variability, my average daily heart rate variability for 2022 is 54 right now, that will put me at worst at the high end of the heart rate variability range for my chronological age. At best, it could be a, a, a heart rate variability of 54 milliseconds is the median heart rate variability for someone 17 years younger. So it could be better than just being above average for my age group. Now note that a relatively high heart rate variability and a low resting heart rate, in my case, suggests cardiovascular youth. In contrast, a lower heart rate variability plus a higher resting heart rate would be expected based on my chronological age. So what's contributing to these improvements for resting heart rate and heart rate variability? So let's start off by looking at body weight changes over this almost four year span and its potential impact on these CV metrics. So here we're looking at my average monthly body weight. So each dot corresponds to the average for an individual month over that same time span that, we, that I use to look at both heart rate variability and resting heart rate. Now note that I record my body weight every morning after number one and two and fasted so that I minimize some of the variability inherent in whether or not I went one or two or if I was fasted or not. So I started this journey uh, about four years ago with a higher body weight, almost 160, and I'm currently now ha have an average daily body weight somewhere around 152. So what's the relationship for body weight with resting heart rate? And we can see that data here. This is the average monthly resting heart rate over the same approximate four year time span. Now note that the two curves seem somewhat overlapping, or at least the trends seem very similar. So when body weight declines, so does resting heart rate. And when body weight increases, so does resting heart rate. So we can look at that correlation more specifically by looking at the individual data points, not looking at monthly data, but the individual data points for resting heart rate versus body weight over that almost 1400 day span. And that's what we can see here. And more specifically, we can see that uh, as, as body weight increases, resting heart rate significantly increases, as shown there by the correlation and statistically significant p-value. 
Now, uh, conversely, as body weight approaches 150 pounds, my resting heart rate approaches 45 beats per minute. Now, obviously, as we can see by the plot, I don't have data yet below 150, so I'm working on uh, getting there slowly. Um, so stay tuned for that in the upcoming, in upcoming videos. All right, so what about heart rate variability? What's the relationship for body weight with that? And that's what we can see here. So it doesn't look like the plot for resting heart rate at all. And there's more variability in this measurement, no pun intended, when compared with the resting heart rate. So declines in body weight are not always matched by uh, improvements for, resting, for heart rate variability. So looking at it more specifically, each individual data point for heart rate variability versus uh, each day for body weight over that same about four year span, we can see that as body weight increases, that's correlated, significantly correlated with a lower heart rate variability as shown by the red arrow. And conversely, as my body weight approaches 150 pounds, heart rate variability approaches youthful levels or relatively, relati relatively youthful levels of 60 milliseconds. So to answer this question, what's the relationship for body weight with the CV metrics? We can see that my resting heart rate and heart rate variability approach youthful values as my body weight decreases. So what about physical activity? That should be the other obvious choice to look at for its potential impact on these CV metrics. So to address that, I'm going to look at data for the average daily heart rate, and that's an index of daily physical activity. So a, a higher average, and I should mention that Whoop provides this data, so I record it just manually into an Excel file. So a higher average daily uh, heart rate equals more physical activity and also more overall stress, as you know, stress can affect your heart rate. So if you have more overall stress, even without exercise, that can impact your overall average heart rate for that day. Now, conversely, a lower average daily heart rate equals less physical activity plus less overall stress on that day. So with that in mind, what's the correlation for the average daily heart rate with next day resting heart rate? And we can see that here and note that this is 760 days of data, uh, two full years of data from April 2020 through the end of April 2022. I didn't have, unfortunately, I didn't have the idea to start tracking this metric and uh, I can't uh, retroactively go back past April of 2020 because just WHOOP doesn't provide that data. So what we can see is that the higher, the more active that I am, the worse the ne or the you know uh, the uh, morning, the next morning, sorry, the next morning resting heart rate increases as shown by the significant correlation between those two uh, those two outcomes. So from this, we can conclude that too much daily activity and too often may be bad for resting heart rate, at least in my case. So what about the correlation for the average daily heart rate with next day heart rate variability? And we can see that here. And the data is uh, now a negative correlation, uh, a significant negative correlation. So in other words, as daily activity increases, my next morning heart rate variability significantly decreases. So once again, this suggests that too much daily activity and too often not incorporating enough rest days may be bad for my next day heart rate variability. So finding the balance between how often to be active and how often to have rest days is, is important for optimizing these two metrics. Now for me, I'm currently on a three day cycle where I incorporate a high activity day as indicated by the average daily heart rate, a medium, so a lower value, and then a relatively lower average daily heart rate. And then I repeat the cycle on day four. And that seems to be working pretty well for me for being able to uh, you know, somewhat optimize these CV metrics. Now, uh, last but not least, what percentage of the variability in these two cardiovascular metrics can be explained by the combination of uh, average daily heart rate, so physical activity and body weight? So to do that, I, I uh, constructed multivariate models. In this case, we're looking at resting heart rate and its uh, association or correlation, overall correlation with the average daily heart rate and body weight. Uh, so the combination of these two, these two metrics so average daily physical activity and body weight is significantly associated with the resting heart rate as shown there by the significance F. And more specifically, we can see that the average daily heart rate and body weight explain 26% of the variability in resting heart rate, which is a pretty, pretty large amount, as we'll see in a minute, compared to how much of this is explained for heart rate variability. Now, the question then is what it, this, the other 74%, what is, what is uh, explaining that for resting heart rate? What, what things can contribute to 74% of the variability in resting heart rate. So um, I look at diet as I've done before in, in, in an upcoming video, not sooner, but probably later to see how much of that can explain the uh, variability in resting heart rate. All right, so what about the heart rate variability? So once again, looking at average daily physical activity and body weight for their collective association with heart rate variability, we can see that this is a significant 
model. So the uh, average daily physical activity and body weight are significantly associated with heart rate variability. But in contrast to the resting heart rate data, we can see that average daily physical activity and body weight only explain 5% of the variability in heart rate, heart rate variability, which means that 95% of other stuff is contributing to variability in heart rate variability. So discovering that may be one means for further optimizing it. So uh, I'm constantly on the hunt to try to figure out what's, what's influencing what. So stay tuned for that, uh, that analysis in future videos. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.